Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Helium 10 Weekly Buzz by the Serious Sellers Podcast. My name is Bradley Sutton, and this is the show where we get you familiar with the latest news in the Amazon and e-commerce space. We interview people in the industry you need to hear from and provide training tips of the week that give you serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. We've got kind of like a a special edition this week of the Weekly Buzz. Uh, Instead of just giving you just general uh, e-commerce and Amazon and you know Walmart news bites. We're going to specifically talk about what went down last week at Amazon Accelerate. A couple of these things we mentioned on the show last week, but we're going to highlight some of the main uh, parts of that conference that was on. Speaking of conferences, all of us this week, hopefully a lot of you guys out there are listening to this in the Virgin Hotel because you are at the Sell and Scale Summit here in Las Vegas. So I hope you guys are enjoying the summit so far. But let's go ahead and hop into these news stories. And then we're also going to have an interview with a serious seller out there. And also there's going to be a cool tip on how within a couple of minutes, you could see all of the keywords that your competitors are not only beating you because they're on page one or two for, but you're not even indexed for those keywords. So it's a great tip that, you know, in two minutes could potentially make you hundreds of dollars. All right, let's go ahead and hop right into the news. All right, the first up is this uh, tailored audience beta. Now, we talked a little bit about this last week, but it's super cool what Amazon is planning to do where they want to now kind of be able to allow uh, eligible brands to start talking, believe it or not, to their customers, you know, through Amazon, through email marketing campaigns and the like. Here's a, I'm showing on the screen right now for those of you watching. This is an actual uh, press release from Amazon on this. And uh, let me give you an example of what this is going to look like. This is from Destiny Wishon from Better AMS. He actually had a, a sneak peek at this. And so she's actually showing what this new tailored audiences beta is going to look like. It's going to have four options where you can market to brand followers, recent customers, High spend customers, and what high spend is, is the highest spending 25% of brand customers in the last 12 months, and repeat customers, customers who have purchased more than one order from this brand in the last 12 months. And that recent customers is the most recently purchasing 20% of brand customers. And what each of these is going to show is, is what the audience size is kind of like how you used to do Facebook ads where it says, Hey, all right, these are the number of customers that qualify for this market. So this is going to be interesting uh, to watch, you know, like once this rolls out, I think it's coming out end of this year, beginning of next year around there, you know, how is this email program going to work? You know, our a lot of you guys know that, you know, any kind of follow-up email, even that request review, a lot of Amazon buyers have opted out of it. So if they start getting bombarded by emails from, you know, Amazon sellers like us who want to take advantage of this, are they just going to easily be able to do a one click opt out? I think actually they have to be able to by law in the USA, at least you have to have a one click opt out. So what does that mean? Do they opt out from you? Do they opt out from all of these kind of like the, the follow up, uh, you know, goes who knows, but the important takeaway here is that Amazon is just making this available. I mean, in the past, you guys all know how it is. And you were complaining, and probably this is why Amazon's making this change. Sellers would complain like, man, Amazon does not want me talking to my sellers. Like these aren't my, or to these buyers, these aren't my buyers. These are Amazon's buyers, Amazon's customers, and I am not allowed to market to them. Well, that was yesterday's Amazon. Today's a little different story. So regardless of the outcome, it's it shows a shift in kind of how Amazon is gating its own customers, as it were. Uh, the next update is about uh, Alexa, all right? An Ask Alexa thing. And my Alexa, as I'm doing this here, is kind of going crazy thinking I'm talking to her. But this is something that I'm not completely sure, but I try to like kind of look at uh, what people are posting, like Liron and Destiny about it. But what I understand is that like, let's say you're going to ask like Alexa some, some kind of question, you know, like how do I, uh, remove a stain from a white collared shirt or something like that. Right. And then in addition to just answering that, like, I think sellers are going to be able to like pre-program like some of these answers where it tie, you know, you can give the answer, but then at the end of it, it ties back to your product. Like, let's say you have like some kind of like a stain remover or something like that. Well, now you're going to be able to answer that question. And then at the end of that answer, perhaps have uh, Alexa recommend going to a product that can solve that. So the key again here, the key takeaway here is we need to be ready. If that, if that is the case, are you going to take advantage of it? You need to be able to think about what kind of Alexa stop. Uh, 
I, I normally would edit these out, but I told you my Alexa was uh, was going crazy over here thinking I'm talking to her, but I'm not talking to you right now. Anyways, as I was saying, you've got to be ready to be able to like answer these common questions. Now, this is something that some form of it kind of exists. Like you guys ever get those emails as sellers where it means customers ask questions. That's the Q&A part of an Amazon listing. And then when that happens, you get an email and then you can like reply as a seller. A lot of you guys I know are not taking advantage of that. Make sure you have somebody checking those emails that come from Amazon so that you can reply because those replies will get posted on the Amazon page. So this is another thing to be on the lookout for. Uh, another thing that was mentioned at Amazon Accelerate last week is buy with Prime and new kinds of advertising. So from what I understand, and this is also here from this, this press release from Amazon, is that now Participating sellers can showcase their DTC products on Amazon with a new Buy With Prime page within their brand store, a multi-page multi storefront on Amazon. So to me, what this sounds like is that you're going to have your own products and you're on your own storefront, but then maybe you have some products that are from your website, but not on Amazon, but you have the Buy to Prime badge on it you're gonna be able to advertise those those products. And potentially somebody could come in with maybe no products on Amazon and still have like an Amazon brand storefront. Other interesting things of this is that you can start now targeting buy with prime products that aren't necessarily Amazon products, it sounds like, with sponsored brand ads. Now that was crazy to me, all right? So let's say I've got a product, it's only on my WooCommerce or Shopify website, but I'm using buy with prime, I don't have an ASIN per se for it. Like it's not a, a product on Amazon, but I can now target that with a sponsored brand ad. Additionally, uh, Amazon, you guys know how sometimes you might be on like, you know, CNN or Fox News, uh, some, you know, ESPN, some random website, and all of a sudden like Amazon ads for products show up. You know, that's not necessarily, you know, like you can't just, hey, start a sponsored product, target CNN or something like that. A lot of uh, the times you see that that's Amazon paying their own money to target Amazon product or to target customers who might be interested in Amazon products. And as part of this buy with prime thing, they're saying that there's going to be co-branded buy with prime social media ads, which are funded and managed by Amazon to help drive traffic to buy with prime products. So again, something that's not live yet, but something to keep an eye on a big shift. A lot of these things are shifts, guys, you know, like the, about contacting the uh, the uh, customers. Here's another shift where where Amazon doesn't want to take people off of Amazon, you know, in order to buy products. But this is kind of like what what is happening right here where they're going to be highlighting other things. So it's going to be interesting. You know, some, some of the feedback I've heard for people in the beta is that you know, it might be a little bit, you know, too, too, too many cogs. Uh, you know, too many clicks that they have to make in order to make this happen. But again, the, the key point is not how difficult or how easy it is, but this represents kind of a shift in Amazon's core philosophy of how they've done things in the past. Another thing is Amazon 3PL that was mentioned. And now the official name of this service, I believe, is like AWD. And this is called, or stands for Amazon Warehousing and Distribution. You can already start reading about this. It's brand new, uh, supplychain.amazon.com, supplychain.amazon.com, and read about what this is. But again, I don't know too much about this. What it seems like is like Amazon is kind of like its own 3PL now, all right? You know, so, you know, Amazon has always done multi-channel fulfillment, but now Amazon wants to be able to take some of your products that aren't on Amazon and fulfill them in generic boxes. You know, a lot of places don't want you uh, you know, shipping things in, in Amazon boxes, right? So like, let's say you have Shopify or WooCommerce, you're going to be able to integrate it directly into this and then have your orders fulfilled by Amazon using Amazon's fulfillment network. So uh, something pretty interesting. Next thing they mentioned at Accelerate is a new escalation that you're going to be able to do for seller support. I don't know too much details uh, about this one too, but you know, I, I saw a video that some, or like multiple, multiple videos where when this was announced, like the whole crowd, like started cheering and things like that. So it, it allows you to get to an advanced uh, sales support person or seller support, I should say, person more quickly uh, if you're running through trouble with the, the regular support on Amazon. Now, let me tell you guys, whenever this rolls out, please, 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 please do not abuse this program. You know, years ago, 
it started coming out that, hey, if you email Jeff at Amazon.com, you can get you know some of your problems resolved because it goes to the escalation team. And then what happened was everybody started emailing Jeff at Amazon.com like, hey, you know, I need to reconcile my FBA shipment. That's not what you use this. And then, and then it kind of became less uh, useful to be able to do that. If you guys are escalating things that really sh probably shouldn't be escalated, but you're just like impatient, you know, like you don't want to have to wait, it's going to ruin it for the rest of us. So I'm not exactly sure on how we're going to be restricted or allowed to use this escalation, but whatever the case is, I beg of you, please do not abuse it so that the rest of us, you know, might not get our legitimate, like super serious stuff being able to be uh, fixed. All right. So again, new button that is coming soon to buyer or the seller support messaging system. Our uh, last uh, highlight, you know, there are, there are other things that were mentioned, but the last highlight that I want to bring up is express payouts. All right. Now at first, when I, th I, I saw this, I thought this was talking about where I can get my payouts every day. And I'm, there's a chance that maybe in the future that's going to be something. But what this is, is like, for example, those of you who get your payouts every couple of weeks, you notice that let's say the, the batch closes like mine on Tuesday night at 11 PM. I don't get that payment in my bank account usually until like Thursday night or Friday morning around there. What the bank terminology is like what it's using. I don't know if that's using ACH or whatever the case is, but now supposedly if you select express payout and it's free for right now in the future, it might cost 50 cents, which still makes it a no brainer is it's going to happen in 24 hours. And this is available now to start doing in a lot of your accounts. All right. So what you're going to want to do is you go to settings, you go to account info, deposit methods. And on the right hand side, if you guys uh, have access to this, you'll see under assigned marketplaces, the ability to go to express payouts, meaning that if my batch closes on Tuesday night, I guess I'm going to be able to get my money in my bank account on Wednesday instead of Friday. You know, that might not seem like a big deal, but uh, to some of you, that might be a big deal. All right, that's it for the news this week. All right, remember, uh, stick around. I've got a super, super cool hack as far as using Helium 10 to be able to find the keywords that you're not indexed for, that your customers are crushing it on. But before we get into that, we have a couple valuable uh, spots here. First up, Lem has got an interview that he did of a seller from Canada. Lem, take it away. Hello, everyone. This week, we have Jenny coming into us from Canada. She's part of the Serious Sellers Club, which again is an exclusive club meant for six, seven, eight figure member sellers on Amazon. So Jenny, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well, just well. I'm super excited uh, that Selling Scale is coming up next week. So I'm going to be there. I know you're going to be there, right? Too, Jenny? Yeah, super excited. It's going to be my first uh, in-person conference. So looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll go just go ahead and get right into it, Jenny. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in Amazon. Yeah. So um, I live in Vancouver, Canada. I'm actually a nurse. And how I started was wow. I actually had multiple back injuries from nursing. And I couldn't imagine working another like 30 years before, you know, I retire and then live my life because I'm like, I don't think I could even have much of my body by then to live my life. So mm -hmm. I was looking for some side hustles and I came across um, uh, an ad on like how to sell on Amazon. And I didn't even know that you could sell on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Amazon just like owned everything. <laughs> That's so, a like, good assumption. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, people, like regular people can just sell on Amazon. And I was trying to do some stuff like handmade stuff and, mm -hmm. and meeting up on like, you know, selling reselling on Facebook, but it was like really flaky people. And I was only getting like $10 for things. So, came across, um, yeah, an ad, and then I, I took FBA Masterclass course, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I started to learn learn how to sell on Amazon. That's awesome. I love that. And so yeah. tell us a little bit about how you got into Helium 10 and which of the Helium 10's tools is your favorite? Yeah, so it's actually Bradley came on to um, to the course. We were doing like a, mm -hmm. like a crash course Helium 10 with FBA Masterclass. And when he was showing us all these tools, my mind was blown. I'm like, I was doing some of these things like manually, like the market track. Yeah. I, I was at that point, like starting my journey. I was so obsessed. Every day I was just looking at like page one. Are there new competitors? What are they doing? So market, you know, just him explaining what Healing 10 does. I mean, like really fell in love with it. I love the software. It mm -hmm. does so much. And I love that there's always improvement. So that's how I, um, you know, switched over to the previous software to Helium 10. Oh, I love that. I love that. And you said your favorite tool is uh, Market Tracker? Actually, my favorite tracker, my favorite tool is Profits, actually. Profits. 
because you know cash flow and profits is the life of any business right so before i wasn't really utilizing that i was relying on my mm -hmm. bookkeeper to give me um you know the stats like a month later after things happen but with profits you can see it on a daily basis you need to give it a weekly you don't have to wait for reports you can you know really see that um you know just like the basics right you don't mm -hmm. you know not yeah. other expenses but as a good general overview of profit so that's been really helpful i love it and so uh going back to uh your Amazon business, of course, now you're in Series Sellers Club. So that means you're a six, seven, or eight figure seller. You're doing pretty well on Amazon. So, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you for at least an Amazon seller tip that you can share with the audience out there. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so many, but I think one that's kind of like really underutilized is like pay for PPC with your credit card. Um, Ooh, love tip. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if it's talked about a lot. So, you know, Amazon defaults to paying through your Seller Central account. And mm -hmm. they take it out, you know, once you reach $500, every two days, they take it out with a debit card, right? Yeah. But if you pay with the credit card, I've flown so many business class um, flights using my credit card through PPC, yeah. um, just using the sign up bonuses. And also, it also helps with cash flow because when you pay with your credit card, you don't have to pay off your credit card till like a month later, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just at the minimum, but pay off them a month later so it's not actually taking out from your amazon seller every two days so that's a huge tip of like you know you're spending the money anyways you might as well get points for it yeah exactly make a difference and especially like if you can leverage a good sign up bonus on top of a really good rewards program if either points or miles you can really start to see those things grow and then before you know it you're like man i could pay off for my next po with points with this credit card, with this credit card, based on how much you're spending, so really love that tip. Exactly, I am flying to sell and summit on points. Oh, love it! I love to hear it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Jenny, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, it was a great interview, great getting to meet you. Um, and so, everyone else, I will see you on the next one. But we appreciate it. Awesome! Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, Lem, for that interview. Next up, let's talk uh, a little Walmart from Freedom Ticket with this quick clip from Carrie. In this next Freedom Ticket clip, I speak with David Milstein from Cellcord about competitiveness on Amazon versus Walmart. So we take a look at a very competitive product and compare the opportunity on Amazon versus Walmart. So check it out. So we have over here search protectors. Now, immediately we could see a shift in like the listing qual and the listing uh quality we have the first the first product over here has 13 reviews immediately way less than 2500 and over here we have a few a few hundred and there's no sponsor listings in this top row let's take a look throughout the page if we could find any sponsor listings for this keyword and it's not looking like there are any sponsored sponsored listings which is quite interesting mm. instead of looking through these listings one by one we're just going to go ahead and pop up the x-ray for this page okay so right off the bat we do see that there is actually a higher percent of WFS, which is actually interesting, considering that this product in general is less competitive. But you do notice that also the average revenue is a little bit higher, uh, and there's also greater across both Amazon. It's similar on Amazon and a little bit higher for the total revenue over here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at, at some of these products, reviews, and ratings over here. So let's just go first by the rating. And we can see these are in the top, I believe it's 37 products. Uh, yeah, 37 total products. And we, have, we can see here the lowest one has 3.4 rating, which is abysmal, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's not something that could compete on, on, on Amazon. We can see here review count. We have the lowest tier with three. Although it's five stars, which is great. There's only three reviews and you're in the top, you're in the top 50 products of the page. That, that, that's that's, that's, pre that's pretty, pretty insane. And it's actually higher priced and it's still making a good amount of sales. Yeah, and look, well, just look at this copy, first of all. That, that's a problem. Like there's literally like a symbol in the title. Like <laughs> yeah. this is, this is really bad copy. Um, we could also see it has two images that there's, there's three products over here that have two images. These listings are not done well. There's, there's so much opportunity to just make good listings, get into these big keywords and you, you will, you will do well. Just, Get your listings to do well, even run a little bit of PPC or just get them up organically. You can, you have the opportunity to compete with these big brands and become a leader in, in Walmart sales. 
Um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these listing quality scores and we should notice these significantly lower than the previous page. Here we have 64, but you'll notice the other page had a lot of them hanging around in the 90s. There's so many over here that are in the 70s, 73, and here we have some, obviously these ones are doing a little bit better. But there's, there's so many poorly done listings over here and as you can see, a lot of 1P. If they're not, if it, if you see a lot of one P, you know there's a lot of opportunity, huh? One P <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's that's the South Card motto. So um, here here we have we could see over here also the pricing is a little bit more similar compared to Amazon and Walmart. Now I do believe this is because there are a lot of like two pack listings over here. We can see over here like two pack, two pack. This is just one of those products that is more sold in that in that in that pack package variant. So that's why you will see. Kind of, I think, a more similarity in price because I believe Amazon has more products that are higher count just because. Like a two pack. It, yeah, or exactly. Because it's easier to lower like your, your average cost just by providing more products, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why you'll kind of see a little bit of a similarity in price. Okay, so we have we have as we can see like some of the some of the items over here. We just have low, low image quality. Let's just take a look at some like the shipping options. Like this is a three plus shipping over here. Th there are some pickup options because again, these are like 1P items. There's going to be a lot of that, especially for like these home home products, products that you typically find in Walmart stores. But these listings are not done well to succeed on Walmart.com Marketplace. So get in there and get your products to really take over. There's a bestseller over here. Rollback. There's I don't see a single item that's on clearance. You you have an opportunity to be the only product on the front page that has that there's a reduced price over here. But I don't see any any items that are clearance. All right. So let's take like let's take a look like similar to Walmart. Let's uh, let's just compare Amazon for search protectors. All right. So let's take a look at Amazon over here. And rather than kind of scrolling through it, let's just go ahead and pop open the X-ray. Okay. And as we can see over here, um, we have. Let's just take a look at just the reviews to start with. So let's look at the top 22 products. Even with that, I mean, the lowest the lowest uh, review count is 376. If you want to keep watching this module, check out Freedom Ticket 3.0, Week 11, Module 11.07. We discuss more in depth about what the competition is on walmart.com and what products you should potentially move and start selling on walmart.com. So check it out. All right, lastly, you guys might be wondering, hey, how can I, in a couple of minutes, be able to see how my competitors are killing me on keywords that I might not even know exist? In other words, I don't even have them on my in my listing. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into a pro training that talks about that. I'm going to show you in just a couple of simple steps how you can get instant insights into all of the keywords that maybe one or more of your competitors are on page one or two for but you're not even ranked for them at all. All right, where we're gonna start with is, you could start in Cerebro if you've already done a Cerebro search, but let's just say you're starting from zero. That's totally fine. You can actually just start on your main keyword. Like let's say I'm here in Coffin Shelf and I'm gonna select my product first, all right, here in the results, and then the rest of it, I'm going to select all of the competitors. And once I have my product selected first again, and then all my main competitors, I just have to hit run Cerebro. And when I do that, it's gonna pull up right here in Cerebro, all of the thousands of keywords that any one of these products might be ranking for. Now, what I'm gonna to do to see the main keywords that I'm maybe missing, I'm gonna just do, do a minimum search volume of 200, and then I'm gonna use these advanced rank filters. And I say, hey, I just wanna see anything that at least one other product is ranking for, and there's no magic number here, but I'm just going to go ahead and put, they are ranking between like one and 100. That means they're on, on the first couple of pages organically, right? And what I'm going to do here, and this is the one that I think most of you guys don't know about, is I'm going to put a zero and a zero. This means that my rank, my product, as long as that's the first one that I put, I am not ranking at all. And once I do that, I'm going to hit apply filters. We're going to find all of these keywords. And we have here 278 filtered keywords. All right. What's the next step? The next step is I'm going to copy all these and I want to see which ones I'm not even indexed for. Remember ranking and indexing are different. So for example, you know, maybe I might be indexed for it, but I'm just not ranking for it. All right. Let me show you how to tell if you're indexed for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit export data. I'm going to copy it all to the clipboard and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it into 
index checker. But you know what? Before I even do that, I want to see the end. I'm going I'm to skip a step here. You know what? I'm going to skip a step and I want to go directly to Frankenstein and see the individual words that I might not be indexed for. So I could have done this differently, but I'm just going to skip a step right now. And all I'm going to do here is do one word or phrase per line. And it already comes up. These are all the individual words uh, from those phrases. All right. From those phrases that my competitors are ranking for. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that right here into index checker instead of those phrases. So let me just delete all of these that I have here and paste it. And now you can see I've got all those individual ones. All right. Let's go ahead and press enter and go ahead and check the keywords. All right. So now it is checking if I am indexed. All right, so there we go. Uh, after a couple of minutes, it'll usually check. And then all that matters to me is this last column here, cumulative. I just hit that number, or I just hit that column, I should say. And th these check marks means I am indexed for the a lot of these keywords. But I'm gonna go here to the bottom to see all of the keywords that I'm not indexed for. So here it is. Now, obviously, I didn't even check some of these. Some of these I might not even care about, like Ben and Cooper. I'm not sure how relevant that is, but I would have probably checked it. But all of these keywords are part of phrases that my competitors are on page one or two for, but I am not even indexed for it, meaning that it's no way for me to even be ranked or, or send like targeted PPC towards it. So guys, this is something that would take you literally less than five minutes to do. See where your competitors are. Uh, might be beating you on keywords that not only you're indexed for, but the ones that you're not indexed for so that you're not even in the game. You're not, you're not even fighting to win. You're not even in the game on these keywords. All right. I want all of you guys to go ahead and run that on your own listings now and let me know how many you're able to find. Lastly, just want to remind you guys about some assets for you for content if you are German or Spanish speaking. We've got Serious Sellers Podcast Auf Deutsch, Serious Sellers Podcast in Espanol. Hopefully you guys are subscribed to that, however you're watching this. Now, if you're watching, listening to this on a podcast player, all you have to do is search for those two words, Serious Sellers Podcast Auf Deutsch or in Espanol, and you'll see these podcasts. Make sure to uh, subscribe there. Or you can see these or listen to them at helium10.com forward slash German or helium10.com forward slash Spanish. For those of you watching this video on YouTube, we now have a YouTube channel for our Spanish and German podcast. Most of the episodes are not in video, but we have like an audio over the video, but our BBL for every month, our Bigger Better Launch is in full video. But to subscribe to those, just look up those same two things, Serious Sellers Podcast Auf Deutsch, or Serious Sellers Podcast in Espanol, and then look for that channel and hit subscribe there so you can get the information and in your own language. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Weekly Buzz. We'll see you next week to see what's buzzing.